my name is Carolina and I'll be your sleigh driving instructor today. This is your sleigh. You'll have five to six dogs in front there attached to the line and the passenger sits in here facing the dog and the driver stands here behind the sleigh. The three key points that we want to take away from today are one, watch your dogs and make sure the line is taut. Two, never let go of the handlebar and three, keep a good distance between the sleighs. It doesn't matter who's the passenger first and who's the driver first because you're going to have a chance to swap halfway. And I would recommend that everyone tries it because this may be the only opportunity that you have. As the passenger, what you want to do is put one foot over the sleigh so you don't slip. Uh, and then you want to scooch as far back as you can. Then you want to put two feet on top of the blanket here and the cover will go over your feet for extra warmth. Now, as a passenger, your two main roles are one, to take pictures, and two, to help your driver watch the dogs and make sure that the line is taut. But I'll explain a bit more about that later. Now, as a passenger, keep your hands and feet inside at all times. So if you have your hands out here, if you're holding on, which might feel natural, you can actually tip over and injure yourself. Same goes for if you have your hands out like this. So we want to make sure that you keep your hands and feet inside at all times. If you have a backpack with you, you can put this in between your legs here, or it can be on the back of the driver. If you have children with you, um, what you want to do is keep your knees bent here and the child can go in between your legs and then you put your feet back inside so that everyone's sitting comfortably inside the sleigh. And then a guide will help you pull the blanket over both of you. Once the passenger is ready and in position, make sure you have all of your gloves, hats, anything else you need on and zipped up before you get into the ready position with two hands on the handlebar and two feet on the brake. This shows the guides that you're ready to take responsibility for your sleigh. Once you're ready to go, the sleigh rope here will be detached from holding post. And at this point, we're testing you to see if you can hold your team. If you're extra small or light, what you may want to do is just pull the handlebar up a bit and push your feet down so that the brake goes further into the snow. And this way, it may be a bit easier to hold your team. When we're setting off, we'll give you one of three signals. This means stop or wait. This means go. And this means slow down. So when we give you the go signal, what you want to do is take one foot off the brake and put it onto the black part of the runner here. That way, you just want to make sure that the line is taut and that all of the dogs are running at an even pace before you take both feet off of the brakes. If your dogs haven't realized that it's time to go, or if your brake is stuck in the snow, use your body weight to push the sleigh forward, and at that point the line will go slack, um, and your dog should know that it's time to go. Alternatively, if your brake is really stuck in the snow, push with one foot to take one foot off the runner and just push. Make sure you don't take two feet off and run behind because often at the start, the dogs will get really excited and they might just run off and you might lose your sight. After setting off, the next most important thing to know is how to go around a corner. It's quite similar to riding a bike. You want to make sure that you slow down before the corner so that you're going at a pace that you feel comfortable with. So you want to put one foot on the brake and just slow down before the corner. And then when you're going through the corner, you want to make sure you have two feet on the runners so that you're in the stable position again. And when you're going right, you want to lean a little bit to the right. When you're going left, you want to lean a little bit to the left. If your sleigh tips over, we still ask that you don't let go of the handlebar, unless obviously you're in a position where you might injure yourself, but generally we ask that you don't let go. And usually uh, there will be enough friction between the snow and the sleigh to eventually stop the sleigh and the dogs will stop. And at that point you can wait for a guide to come and help you or you can try and get the sleigh back up. But you have to be very careful because uh, at this point when some dogs realize that they can go, they might rush forward and you might lose your sleigh. So if you try and tip the sleigh back up on your own, make sure you immediately put two feet on the brake, stop the dogs, make sure that you and your passenger are okay before you set off again. Next we have uphills. They're quite simple. So when you're going on up, if you notice that the dogs are slowing down, they've started looking back at you, they think you've possibly had too much to eat for breakfast, then what you might want to do is just help them a little bit to get up the hill. 
Um, so what you can do, take one foot off the runner and help push the dogs up. Or alternatively, and this also helps on colder days when you're trying to keep your feet warm, you can run behind the sleigh as long as you're keeping two hands on the handlebars so that you don't lose your team. <laughs> After an uphill, quite often comes a downhill. But downhills are the most critical time to be watching your dogs because if the line is not taut, what can happen is that your sleigh can go faster than the dogs and the front part of the sleigh here can hit the back legs of the wheel dogs and that can injure them. So what you want to be doing is making sure that the line is taut at all times and you may want to be slowing down. So you want to have one foot on the brake up until the point at which the dogs are all running evenly again um, and you pass the downhill and then you can get back into the stable position. What can sometimes happen uh, if you don't react in time is a dog can get tangled. So this means that a dog might be running on three legs. Most of the time, the dogs can untangle themselves. So what you might want to do is slow down a little bit and just wait and see if they can untangle themselves. And once they're all running fine again, then you can get back into the stable position and continue. If your dog is tangled um, and it can't sort itself out, then at that point, um, what you want to do is put two feet on the brake, stop, and this is the only time where uh, you are allowed to take one hand off the handlebar and you can lift it up like this and this signals to us as the guides that you need help. This is why we ask that you don't wave at the sleigh in front or behind even if you have your friends or your family with you because it means that we think that you need help. And at this point the snowmobile will come rushing over or the guide in front um, and this wastes everyone's time so please don't do it. Only put your hand up if you need help. Another reason why a dog might be on three legs is that they're using the toilet, and this is also perfectly okay. Most of the dogs are used to using the toilet while running, but again, you might want to slow down a little bit and wait for them to finish before you continue going. If you have your lead dogs and they're doing a number two, they might stop completely. So if your lead dogs stop, you also want to stop, so that's two feet on the brake, wait for them to finish, and then continue. If the sleigh in front of you is stop, you also want to stop. So the last key point is that you want to keep a good distance between the sleigh in front of you. Um, this is ideally around 10 meters between your lead dog and the sleigh in front. So this rope um, that was attached to the post will be hanging behind um, the sleigh in front at all times. If your lead dog past the end of this rope here, you know that you're probably too close to the team in front. And at that point, you want to slow down. So you walk one foot on the brake, like this. We try and make the teams as even as possible, but sometimes you may notice that you're catching up to the sleigh in front all the time and you're having to be on the brake, slowing down um, to keep good distance. Alternatively, the sleigh behind you may be catching up all the time and you may be having to push with one foot or running behind the sleigh. Um, just to make sure that the team behind doesn't catch up. And if we notice that there's a significant difference between you and the sleigh in front or behind, we may swap some dogs just to make them more even. So around halfway through the safari, we're going to stop everyone so that that way both the passenger and the driver will have a chance to swap roles. And at that point, you want to make sure that there's someone on the brake all the time so that the team doesn't run off. So while the driver is staying on the brake, the passenger can at this point get out of the sleigh. So you want to get out and then while the driver still has both feet on the brake, they can shift over to the side and the passenger can put one foot onto the brake. And then as the driver gets off, um, the passenger can now put two feet on the brake. And that way the driver is free to get off and go sit in as a passenger. At some point during your safari, we're gonna stop at a cabin for hot drinks and snacks. When we get to the cabin, there's a tight corner uh, where all the sleighs and teams are gonna be tied off. But because it's so steep, what we want to do is tie each team off one at a time. And so we're gonna have everyone stop before the corner and then the guide is going to signal for the first sleigh to go. Please wait and stay still until the guide comes back to help you round the corner. At this point, you want to be regulating your brake so that the dogs don't go too fast and run the guide over. So please put one foot on the brake, make sure that the dogs aren't going too fast, but also that they're not stopped completely. At some point during the safari, we're gonna get to a road crossing 
At this point, you want to be watching the guide on the road as carefully as possible. Uh, if they give you the stop signal, you want to make sure that all of your dogs, especially your lead dogs, are not on the road yet. So give yourself a good amount of time to stop and make sure that you're able to brake before the road. Once the guide signals for you to go, take your feet off the brake and make sure that you get all the way across the road and that you leave some space for the slaves behind to go so that everyone can get safely across the road. As you're going back into the farm, you're going to want to slow down, so one foot on the brake, and watch your dogs, make sure the line is taut, make sure they're not getting distracted by the other dogs um, in the cages, or by the posts or the trees, make sure they're not getting tangled in between. And a guide will signal where you need to stop, it'll be next to a post where they can then tie you up. Um, please wait with two feet on the brake and two hands on the handlebars, up until the point at which they've completely tied you up, your dogs can't move with your passenger, and then once they tell you it's safe, you can then get off, help your passenger out of the seat, um, say hi to the dogs, make sure that you've thanked them uh, for the ride, and that's it.